some challenges uh, and uh, final recommendations for those who, who want to do similar things. So basically, uh, why, uh, why MT? Because like uh, two out of three of the bookings in uh, booking.com are made in a language which is not uh, English, basically. And we have like more than one million property and it's growing. And basically, in, for every hotel description, for every hotel or property, like in general, we have like description in English, but we don't necessarily have like this description in other languages. And uh, that's why, uh, b because we have lots of users who uh, like book in other language, we translate or we use to translate using uh, uh, like a freelancer network. And if you have like one million property and it's, it's always based on the demand and you can't translate everything, so that's why we go for machine translation. It's, it's not only about growing, but it's like in a couple of weeks, you can have like updates in the descriptions of like uh, thousands of uh, the, the property descriptions. And that's why these things needed to be automated. Also, it's not only about hotel descriptions. It's also about like the user generated uh, content in general. It could be like CS emails, could be uh, 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 reviews and so on. And if you localize this for all the users, it's, it's very uh, helpful given that two thirds of uh, the bookings are made in a uh, different language. Uh, for, for the sake of this presentation, like I, I want to compare uh, the tools like uh, OpenNMT and uh, Tensor Tensor. So I'll keep this presentation focused on the uh, use case, which is the translation of the property descriptions, which are like the uh, uh, which are like short descriptions that you find on the uh, hotel page. So basically, like what are the uh, neural uh, sequence sequence models or like neural machine translation? So basically, you have like a sentence in uh, one language and uh, other sentence in like uh, another language. So we want to translate in this example from English to German. And we need some way to decode the English sentence into uh, some kind of representation. And then like another way to decode, like uh, to decode the, uh, this representation and to get the translation for uh, the target language. And basically speaking, or like uh, the, the classical models used to encode the uh, whole sentence, the whole source sentence in a fixed representation, vector representation, and then given this vector, you can uh, translate like token by token or word by word, you get the translation. Like if I want uh, uh, to elaborate on this more, like if you know, uh, like those encoders and decoders are basically uh, recurrent neural uh, networks. So basically, m most used uh, recurrent uh, models for this kind of models are uh, LSTMs or uh, like gated units in general, G GRUs or LSTMs. And basically, uh, you have the encoder, you have like those, uh, uh, like in, in the encoder at each time step you uh, get the time states and, 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 and so on until you get the final uh, hidden state uh, for the encoder given the tokens that you have for the source sentence. And using this final hidden state, you try uh, at each time step to get a um, prediction, uh, to maximize the prediction for the output for the target world and, and, and so on. Like you have like RNN in the source and RNN in the target and you uh, in, in this kind, in this kind of kind of models, you get a fixed length representation, which is the last hidden state so, uh, state of the encoder that represents the whole input sentence, which is theoretically okay, but g given, but computationally it's not okay, because when you have very long sentence and you want to encode it in a fixed length representation, this actually doesn't work, and you forgot if if the sequence is is very long, like you forget about the uh, uh, the tokens or the words that you have in the start of uh, the sentence. And to um, fix this problem, like uh, the attention mechanisms uh, come, to, uh, come to help it with this. Uh, so basically I want to give like some a premiere like about attention. So because those basically w will keep up with us like maybe until the end of the presentation. Uh, so in, in, in this attention, like the, the, the idea of attention that you have, if you have like a query, 
and everything is vector when I say now, like query and key and value are vectors. So if you have a query and a key and value pair, and you want to get like the uh, compatibility between the uh, query and uh, different uh, keys, and, uh, and, and so sometimes like the keys and values can be the same thing as, as we will see later. So we'll have like a compatibility function which I call like score here. And we want to score the compatibility between like the query queue and each of the keys. And for example, it could be ki here. And finally, we, we normalize like using a softmax. And by, by this softmax, like you get what we call like attention score. And this attention score between the query k, uh, q and the key ki. And if you think of it like in terms of uh, like the sequence sequence model, so the query could be uh, one hidden state at, at, at time at a specific time step, and the keys are all the uh, hidden states of the encoder. And you want to know like which is the uh, most compatible one of the key of the hidden states of the encoder to the current hidden state of the decoder. And finally, you get instead of having fixed length representation, you get weighted average uh, of the whole representations all, uh, or, or the values that you have and you call it the context vector of the, of the query. So basically the score function, back to the score function because I, I mentioned the score function, scoring function here. So the, this scoring functions can take different, uh, 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 can, can be formulated in different ways. Simplest way is just dot product. You can have like transformation in between, or you can have nonlinear transformation in 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 in, in terms of uh, s simple neural network, as you see in the in the third one. So we have we have this model, and uh, when we add the attention uh, part, we get uh, this model. So basically, the, this yellow part is the, the uh, encoder part, and the other. Uh, part is the decoder part with uh, one hidden layer. And at this time st step, for example, at this, you have the hidden state and you want to get the compatibility or the attention scores between this time, uh, uh, this hidden state and all the hidden states there. And based on this, you get attention score and you don't get at each hidden state in the decoder at each time step, you get, um, you get weighted average based on the attention. So if you try to translate uh, cost and loss, for example, you will give more attention to the word free than other words because it's more important in this translation. And if you want to translate Wi-Fi, uh, you'll get more attention, give more attention to uh, the Wi-Fi uh, hidden state, the hidden state which is generated from uh, after Wi-Fi, for example, even if Wi-Fi is very early in, in, in the sentence. And uh, that, that's basically the, the idea of the attention. And th this is basically the model that we use uh, with OpenNMT. So for OpenNMT, we use similar model, but with a bit different parameters. So we use like the encoder with four hidden uh, states, decoder with four hidden states. We use the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, like the hidden states, the hidden uh, uh, state size is like 1000. We use bi bidirectional LSTMs and so on. And uh, because like when, when you do work with machine translation problems, you uh, have to have like limited vocabulary. And uh, uh, OpenNMT like supports wh what we call by byte pair encoding where you learn subwords. Because like in, you can learn different subwords and then the combination of those subwords can make different, more, uh, bigger vocabulary but your vocabulary is basically based on uh, subword level. And it can be learned like jointly uh, like source and, uh, with the source and target or se separately for each uh, one separately. So th this is the basic model that we use for OpenNMT. I'll go for ju just to briefly discuss the second uh, model which is the, the transformer model. Yeah, it's, it's just the, the, this uh, slide is like uh, has everything, but I, I'll go like over the details in the uh, uh, following slides. And uh, yeah, after discussing this model, I'll, I'll, I'll give like the uh, uh, evaluation results. 
So basi basically for this uh, transformer model, uh, they, they are like in, in the previous uh, slides, we saw like the sequence sequence models, which is based on uh, recurrent units and attention. And in this model, they basically uh, try to work without the uh, recurrent units at all and try to have uh, like the, uh, this model that's totally based on attention uh, mechanisms. And they have like this, uh, this encoder and this uh, decoder. And basically they have attention in, 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 in three different ways in the stack, like uh, one, one, one time in the encoder and two times in the uh, uh, decoder. And they define what we call also by self-attention. So you don't attend to like at, 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 at a hidden state in the uh, decoder, uh, you used to attend to hidden states in the encoder, but here also you attend to other uh, uh, like hidden states uh, uh, within the encoder or within the decoder. So when you try to encode uh, like a, a word within one language, you, you, you give attention to yourself and other uh, uh, words in, in the same also uh, uh, sentence. And uh, basically for the, the type of attention that is used here is like uh, uh, scale dot product attention. So I, 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 I've showed you some of the uh, attention uh, scoring functions. One of them was like the dot product based uh, attention. And it's the one that is used here. here uh, plus the, the, there is a scaling factor here, which is scaled by the uh, root of dk, which is the dimensionality of uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the dimensionality. Uh, the dimensionality of the uh, vectors in, in, in this case. And they, they used another idea because like when, when I showed the uh, uh, attention equations before, so you get like an uh, weighted average over all the hidden states. And sometimes this can be, um, th this can bias the vector towards like specific hidden state if it has like very high attention weight and uh, then you lose some information or you don't get some attention to some other uh, states that you might uh, need to give attention to. And that's why in this model they introduced what's called by multi-head attention, where you, you have like, uh, instead of having one, uh, one like uh, high dimensional vector for, uh, the, uh, for the context or for the attention, but for the keys, the values and queries, but instead you have small, uh, like smaller uh, vectors and you get them by uh, these transformation uh, um, matrices. And in the end of the day, like you get sub uh, representations and you concatenate them together and uh, get linear projection to reshape uh, uh, to the original uh, shape that you want. And uh, yeah, that's it to, to put everything in the same, in, in, in one picture. So basically you have like uh, the, 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 this attention mechanism is used in three times. Like in, in the encoder it's used here, here the multi-head attention where the queues, uh, the queue and key and uh, query and key and value comes from the, uh, the, the input or from the previous hidden layer. And in the decoder it's the same thing. You have the self attention also here where you attend to, but it's masked because uh, to keep like uh, the, the autoregressive property because you don't, you don't want to attend to following tokens but only previous tokens when you translate. And then you have this part where you uh, get the keys and value from the output of the uh, encoder but the queries from the, uh, uh, from the decoder here, uh, which is similar to the ones that we showed in the sequence, sequence models for the RNNs followed by like feed forward network and then the softmax that we showed before. And basically because we, d we don't have RNNs here nor convolutions, then you have to have like some notion of the, uh, uh, of the positions. Then we, they encode the positions using sinusoids uh, uh, to encode the position of uh, the token. And, and that thing can be done in, in parallel. So you don't have to wait to uh, encode previous time states but everything can be done in, in parallel, which makes the uh, 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 things quite faster. That's, uh, that, that's the implementation the, or the, the model that uh, we use for Tensor to Tensor. So Tensor Tensor is a library that is based on TensorFlow and it offer other models, including this transformer model. 
And the one that we use uh, for our work is uh, similar to the one that I just discussed, but it's uh, a big transformer. So we have like those like NX like R6. So we have six encoder and decoder uh, blocks and the embedding size is 124 and we use NVIDIA GPUs for uh, uh, training, 300 GPUs and the hyperparameters are uh, tuned based uh, on our validation set. Uh, so when, when it comes to evaluation, we have different ways of uh, evaluation. So basically there's automatic evaluation, like if, if, you have, if you know about machine translation, you might have heard of the uh, uh, blue score. And the blue score is basically like, you have reference translation by human in the corpus, and you have the machine gener generated uh, translation, and you try to uh, measure like the, uh, give a score based on the similarity of the intersections of the engrams and so on with, with, with some other extra rules, like. And uh, then before we put things into testing, A-B testing or production, we do also like human evaluation to make sure that it passes a certain threshold. So we have uh, humans to evaluate the adequacy of the uh, uh, descriptions, the fluency, and uh, we have another thing which is called publication scores. So if the translation, is, if the translation is publishable, if it doesn't mislead the user or stop him from booking, there, there could be some missing information in the translation or added information, but as long as it's not uh, it will not affect anything or mislead the user, so it, it could be fine. Yeah, this is one example from uh, our hotel description uh, evaluation. So basically, you, in, in this example, we translate from English uh, to German, and the corpus size is, uh, the training corpus size is 10 million sentences. And uh, in, in this case, there's like the comparison between the model that I just described for OpenNMT law, uh, law and uh, tensor, tensor uh, the, the big transformer model. And in, in this case, it's, clearly, it's clear that in, in terms of blue score and the ad adequacy score, it's, it's better in, uh, in the transformer model. Uh, publication score is, is the same for some reason. It's average publication b b based on different evaluators. Uh, maybe like the adequacy is way better here, but still the other, uh, the, the, uh, the translations from the OpenNMT mo model was like good enough to be published. Um, this is another different example where you have like totally different languages and you have like very f few examples Co compared to German, for example, like a bit more than 5 million uh, uh, training sentences. And in the blue score, you don't have like really big difference. Uh, but in the adequacy scores, when, when it comes to human evaluations, it, 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 there, there is clear difference in the adequacy and in the publication score. So blue score gives some indicators, but it's not everything. So that's why it's, it's, it's quite important to uh, see the uh, evaluations from the human side. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I want just to uh, mention some of the challenges right now. So it's, it's clear that we have the uh, uh, model from, uh, it, it, uh, we have some improvements in uh, when we use like tensor, tensor over like the OpenNMT uh, uh, pipeline. However, there are still some uh, challenges, and those challenges are basically from named entities translations. So, uh, if you have like hotel description translation or transliteration, uh, city names, uh, 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 like uh, landmarks, uh, and so on, sometimes these uh, named entities are not properly translated. Uh, rare words translations, some of the rare words which are not. Uh, present in the corpus or so, omission and addition of information from the translations in general. Uh, context information, because sometimes you have like a sentence, uh, we ca because we translate sentence by sentence, and sometimes you have like, it offers free Wi-Fi, but you don't know what is it. It, it depending on the language, it, it could be ma masculine or feminine or neutral. So if you don't have context uh, information about the context, you can't translate this really well. And, uh, wrong sentence segmentation because we translate in sentence level, but we get paragraphs, so we need to segment the paragraph sentence by sentence. And if you get some problems in the segmentation, you get error propagation and you can't translate this. So just to conclude, uh, like we're, we're movely, mo moving smoothly now from like uh, uh, of the open NMT pipeline that we started with to TensorTensor. 
uh, as it gives us like better uh, accuracy, it's faster to converge. There's specific hardware that is offered by uh, Google that can uh, accelerate the, the training, the TPUs. You can train on different uh, clusters. Implementation is pretty mod modular, and it has like integration, native integration with TensorBoard where you can visualize uh, the, uh, the training process. And again, like it's not super fair comparison. It's, 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 all, it's only about our uh, uh, experience because uh, we uh, worked with OpenNMT Lower, which is the basic, Im the first implementation and the, uh, was at some point the most uh, mature implementation for OpenNMT and, uh, and, and uh, like Tensor to Tensor. Uh, but currently like uh, this OpenNMT version, uh, like the Lower version is, uh, under is, is like in uh, on maintenance mode and they are working on PyTorch and TensorFlow versions which should be uh, more uh, mature. And uh, in our future work or current work actually we're working on uh, fine tuning general purpose models like to de deal with uh, the real world problems, uh, getting some, some, some ways to encode the uh, context to be able to translate this improving segments, uh, segmentation, and uh, we are experimenting also with training with uh, TPUs because all of our experiments were based on uh, GPUs. Uh, th these are some references if you want to try uh, things by yourself or to uh, uh, get more uh, understandings of uh, the math behind the work. And uh, uh, finally, uh, we need some help if you can uh, help us. So we need NLP data scientists. So uh, yeah, if you're interested, you can just drop me an email, and thank you. So, what are the advantages to hosting and training the development of Tensor Plus as opposed to using, let's say, Google Cloud Tensor? Yeah, because we have a lot of data, like for uh, hotel descriptions, for example, as, like if you see the, the German uh, example, we have like above 10 million examples, and it's in domain data. It's about hotel descriptions. So if, if I try Google, uh, Google Translate is good in translate in, in general. It's better than our system in general translations. But when it comes to hotel description translations, we have parallel, a lot of parallel data, like uh, 10 million examples, and it's only about hotel descriptions. And uh, I, I don't have the, uh, the comparison now, but we did compare some like general purpose uh, uh, commercial engines with our uh, uh, system uh, and, and our system performs better when it comes to translating this kind of domain data. So, uh, and uh, in, in the case of hotel descriptions, it's pretty sensitive. Like uh, we want things to be translated properly and the accuracy matters. And uh, yeah, that, that's why basically. Yeah. So just adding to the previous question, are there like pre-trained models that you can do transfer learning and Yeah, actually, there there are uh, a lot. There's a lot of open source like data for uh, for major languages. I, I I would say so. You can uh, try like train your model and uh, t train using this data and then fine tune use, using your own specific data, or you can. There are some models that are published uh, also that you can fine tune, but and and do like. Uh, uh, but the problems with those models that. Uh, if you want a fine-tuned model, then you have to stick to some uh, uh, some architecture uh, or the architecture that was trained uh, that that the model was trained using uh, it. So, but yeah, it's 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 an option. Yeah. Can you become interested in mentioned So. Sorry? Can you repeat the question for the audio? Yeah, so, so uh, you're talking about named entity translations, right? So if you have like Hotel uh, Queen or Hotel King and how to deal with it. So it, it's, it's pretty uh, uh, tricky because in some languages or in, in some cases, some, uh, in some properties, you have to copy the, uh, the entity name as is. 
like Hotel Queen has to be copied as is, and even in, if the language is not in English, it has to be copied in English. In some other cases, it has to be uh, transliterated in the language, and in other cases, it can be translated. So it gets super tricky uh, at, at, at this point, and if the data set has more examples in one type, your model is biased to get uh, to, to translate in, in a certain way. And uh, we used like, uh, we, we, we have some trials using named entity recognizers, so to recognize the entity and restore it later or to get uh, the entities from the database and so on. But it's super uh, tricky because even in the English uh, uh, brochures, like you can't, uh, you, uh, the, uh, the descriptions, you can't just like match uh, things exactly because even the hotel can be, uh, ca can be mentioned in different way or the uh, landmark or whatever. And, uh, and if you build named entity recognizer for each language, uh, it, it's, it's kind of a uh, big uh, effort. But yeah, it's, it's one of the challenges. It, it, it actually like, it, it can be improved, but at some point it's, uh, it's super tricky because it's, it's, it's sometimes it's dependent on the hotel itself. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, you get the wrong uh, result. Like we, we have other system like to, to, uh, to give uh, confidence estimation. So sometimes if we have like low confidence for uh, the, uh, uh, for the translation, we can just uh, exclude the translation. If it's wrong and it went live and it's reported, it's excluded also and it's corrected by uh, humans. Yeah, and yeah. We are working on uh, uh, like using post-editing data to improve uh, uh, the translations, but uh, actually like Yeah. Uh, time and people is different because uh, our team is, is very small team like uh, currently we're uh, two data science developers, uh, developer, and like a couple of uh, other people. Uh, so mainly technical people, two data science and developer uh, maintaining uh, the work. In, in most of the cases, like we train using uh, P100 GPUs in NVIDIA, could take up to one week or so to get uh, results if you have uh, from seven to 10 million uh, examples to train with. Uh, uh, if we have more data, we use like four GPUs. We, we're experimenting with TPUs now. You can, so re resources is, uh, uh, yeah, like I, I would say like we, we Average, if you use like one uh, GPU of NVIDIA GPUs, like it takes one week or so to and converge. Just, like from the start of the project where you decide, okay, I want to do machine translation, yeah. right, up to until, let's say, now you have uh, actual results of how well this yeah. uh, model or this project really is. Yeah. Like what's the duration of that? It, it's slow at first, of course, because you, you set up everything and uh, in, in, in terms of like data science and development work. Uh, but after sometimes you, things get too quickly, yeah, we, we started uh, working uh, uh, a bit like uh, one year ago and we have like lo lo lots of models in, in productions and uh, other models in A-B testing for, for many languages. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's initialized uh, in, in some random way and you optimize it while training. Yeah, because you have like millions of examples, you don't really need to uh, have pre-trained word embeddings or so, you, you just optimize <coughs> while training. And so did you consider using some you know, correlated uh, embeddings in two languages, like, you know, they are, uh, are sharing something in common. Yeah. 
Yeah, actually, actually, this is an interesting thing. Like, and and also like, uh, the, the the attention based models can capture the thing with the scoring or the compatibility function. Uh, so, like, you can have like, uh, get some kind of uh, compatibility between two uh, uh, states. Uh, but we, we've we, like most of the work that we're uh, that we've done is 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 almost. All, all of our work is related to machine translation, so we have never tried using these vectors in other applications, but yeah, it, it could be really uh, uh, useful. Yeah. Um, what's your language coverage like? Uh, so, I mean, do you have different models that you compare? Are you only able to support some language pairs? Do you use JavaScript? Yeah, b basically now we have like, uh, we have one model uh, per language pair. Uh, uh, yeah, and this, so that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that easy to scale, of course, uh, but that's the way it works like everywhere. And uh, there, there are some, uh, when you, t you can try more than language together, there are some techniques to train more than language uh, together, uh, but you, you will take more time to train uh, uh, these models also. It, it will not be that uh, uh, quick for the training time because you'll have more data and it's, it's more challenging, the, data, the variance is more in the data. Uh, but still you can do it, but even the papers that are published that are related to this, uh, even if you do it, you want to have like better performance than training language pairs, unless the two languages are uh, re really correlated uh, with each other. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, scalability is a problem here because when you tr try to scale, you, you need to train a lot of models. That, that's one of the problems with machine translation. Yeah? Uh, do you aim to run all To do what? <laughs> yeah, I guess like the, the role uh, of human is still there, but it's kind of uh, becoming different, uh, so instead of uh, instead of like maybe translating, uh, you, you can uh, you can we use humans a lot in human evaluation. We we post a lot of evaluations like. We